It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome back to the School of Marvelous Light. We're going to be reading from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, so you guys can find that. And while we're waiting, I'll give you a synopsis of what we'll be talking about. Israel was given a law, and they broke that law. They broke that covenant. And so Abba's going to give them a new covenant to keep. Because there are two covenants, it causes a lot of confusion in the lives of men when it comes to serving the Father. There's the letter of the law, and then there's the spirit of the law. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But there are still many who wish to serve the Father in the letter and not in the spirit. And because of that, many they're drawing others to go astray and pulling others away from the truth. The blind leading the blind into the ditch, thinking that what they're doing is right, obviously. But it's not right. So we want to read about that today. We're going to start in 2 Peter. Chapter 3, 16. Well, I'll start in 15. An account that the long suffering of our husband is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Stop. There's a lot of people, and usually these are people, who try to serve the Father with the letter of the law. They deny Paul's writings. They call Paul a heretic. Okay? According to what Peter has said here, if you throw Paul out, you have to throw Peter out too. Because Peter said that Paul is his beloved brother. And he also said that he was given wisdom. If he was given wisdom, who gave it to him? All you Paul haters. Who did Peter say gave it to him? If he called him a beloved brother. Because where did Peter get his from? All right, then that solves that. But this is going to make the next verse make much more sense. He says also, as also in all his epistles. Who's the his? Paul. Peter says in all his epistles, so Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Romans, all Paul's epistles, you see, speaking in them of things, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. You hear that? Now does it make more sense? He speaks in things which are hard to be understood. So don't you think that some people who can't understand would call him a heretic? Would throw his writings out as nonsense? He just told you that, and he's going to even elaborate further on who these type of people who are, who are throwing Paul out. He'll tell you who they are. Watch. In which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, you hear that? Unlearned, so we got them, and unstable, so the unlearned and unstable people rest, which means wrestle, with Paul's writings, as they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. Not only Paul's writings, but they also wrestle with other scriptures that they can't understand to their own destruction. They're not destroying somebody else because they don't understand. They're destroying themselves because they don't understand. Because they're unstable and they're unlearned. Those are the kind of people that throw Paul's writings out. So if you hear somebody say, I believe the Bible, but I'm throwing Paul's writings out, then they are unlearned and unstable. So don't trust them. According to that scripture that Peter said, I'm not saying don't trust them. Peter says that they're unlearned and unstable. So should you trust them? And they're, and they're doing this to their own destruction. So then should you trust them? All right, then. 
So seeing that this is the case with Paul's writings, you need to be able to understand them, which is what I'm going to help you do today. See? Because I don't throw Paul's writings out because I understand them. Because I'm not unlearned or unstable. You see that there? So let's go to Romans chapter 7. Let's go right to Paul. Wisdom is justified of all of her children. You see that? Just like Peter said about Paul. Wisdom was justified of her. If you got wisdom, then, you, then wisdom gave it to him. Her. She gave it to him. Just like she gave it to Solomon. And that's why Solomon was singing songs to her. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Romans 7. Uh, let's see where we want to start. Verse 4. Wherefore, my brothers, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto El. See, the branches. I am the true vine, you are the branches. Now we're going to talk about this coming from this old law to the new law so that it can bear fruit, or in other words, be fulfilled. Christ is the first fruit. He fulfilled the old commandments. Remember, that's what he said. I came not to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. And then in fulfilling it, he gave us a new law, a new commandment he gave us, which we're going to read that too to get the proof. He gave us a new commandment. Now that needs to bear fruit. In other words, that commandment needs to be fulfilled. The new commandment does. Just like he had to fulfill the old. Now the new needs to be fulfilled. And that happens when the branch bears fruit. And that's why the father uses a man named the branch as his ensign to the nations that it's time. Salvation is here because the fruit has budded. That's what, that's what the branch means. That's why it's his name. It means to make sprout or to bring forth. That's what it means. That's why the grandson is fruitful in comparison to his progenitors. I'll give you an example of what I mean. You have Abraham. Then you have Isaac, and then you have Jacob, and then the 12 tribes. So you have the root, Abraham. You have the true vine, Isaac. Then you have the branch from the vine, Jacob. Then you have the fruit hanging on the branch, the 12 tribes. It bore 12 manner of fruit. Can you hear me today? So then everything that I've told you about the grandson is the proof that Abba's done his work with his plant, that it can bear its fruit and sprout. That's the time frame when he will save Israel, he said. You see that? So now, back to Romans. He says, you were delivered from the law. Being dead wherein, we were held. Excuse me, let's go back to verse five. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should, ser should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. See, there's a, trans there's a, a transition going on here from one to the other, a crossing over. Just like Israel had to go through the Red Sea and cross to the other side. See that there? Because, it's, because you're getting cleansed of your old way, which is the letter. And you, now you're coming into the spiritual way of keeping the commandments. You see? Watch this. He says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? El forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said what? Thou shall not covet. See? The same thing people are telling you to do today. See? That proves that they're putting you under the letter of the law. People are still telling you to do the letters that were written in stone. But where are the new commands written? We're going to get into that too. He says, but it's not sin, the law. He said, I had not known sin, but by the law. I had not known lust, 
if I had not heard, thou shalt not covet, see, but sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead, which means when I was a child and innocent, I didn't know what was right and wrong. So I just did what I did. But once I heard what was wrong, then I knew what it was. And I, because I knew what it was, I started to be dealing with it mentally. I didn't do that when I was a child. I was naked and I didn't know I was naked. Now I know I'm naked. Now I'm trying to cover it. Do you see what I'm saying? But be a child again. It doesn't exist. There's nothing to cover. There's no shame, in other words. Sin brought shame. Shame is death. You see, wrong thought is death. Shame is a wrong thought. It's death. Simple as that. You see what I'm saying to you? He said, for I was alive without the law once, like when you were a child, like I described to you. You didn't have the law. You didn't know what was right or wrong. You didn't know what was stealing. You just grabbed it and put it in your mouth. You just saw it. You grabbed it and put it in your mouth. It was all things were in common. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. But you heard something that made you say, wait a minute. No, all things ain't in common. You see, I stole something. Uh-oh, now I'm ashamed. I didn't know. You see what I'm saying? I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, don't steal that. Oh, sin revived and I died. Shame. Oh. You see, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Did you eat the fruit? Oh, oh. He, he made me do it. He made me. See, shame, guilt. Do you understand this little flock? And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. It was meant to save me, but it killed me every time. See? For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it it slew me. See what I'm saying to you? Shame, guilt. It took your I am from you, your I am great that you were when you were a kid and you ran. You said, look at me. And you jumped and you played freely. It took that innocence away from you. That killed you. See? Wherefore the law is holy, set apart, and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? El forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. You see, sin is so deceitful that it used the commandments to even cause me to steal sin. Woo, boy. And we're going to prove that, you see. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, for that which I do, I allow not. Wow, you hear that? I don't know why I do what I do, is what he's saying. I don't know why I do the things that I do. But have you ever felt like that? See, those who deny that are those who wrestle with Paul's writings. You see what I'm trying to say? They deny that aspect of their life existence. You see? He says, I allow not for what I would, the thing I want to do, that do I not. That's what I don't end up doing, just like you have felt, little flock, at times. You have a great idea to do something great, and then something comes and steals that great idea. And you end up doing something different out of fear or out of doubt. You see? If then I do that, which I would not, so if I do the thing that I don't want to do, I consent unto the law that it is good. I'm proving. So if I say, man, I don't want to steal, and then I end up stealing, then I'm proving that the person, when I heard the word that said, don't steal, I'm proving that it was right, that I, I'm not supposed to steal. But I'm still feeling dead. I still feel guilt and shame. It condemns me to hear it, even though it's true. You see what I'm saying to it, to you? It condemns, it kills, you see? For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. The thing I know is wrong, that's what I end up doing anyway. You see? If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, 
but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So do you see why the Father says, your, your works are filthy rags? Because you're doing it with your flesh, which is defiled and corrupted. That's why it cannot inherit the kingdom. So it's no need in trying to try to make it do something it can't do. But you see people trying. Keep this dietary law that it says in there. I'm going to do that law. I'm going to do this law. I'm going to do that law. I'm going to do that law. I'm going to do that law. Just like what Paul was saying. But you end up doing things you don't want to do. You end up doing things that you hate. Now, what does the law say is supposed to happen to you when you do that? Die. See? He says, I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Remember, evil is tedious, laborious thoughts, other thoughts. See? I want to go give my brother this money. He said he needs it. But wait a minute. But I got to pay that. And then that and that. I mean, you can do it. But damn it. You might want to have some leftover money to do this, do that, that. Man, hell with that brother, man. Just do it. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's simple. Laborious, tedious thoughts of doubt and fear. You see? He says, For I delight in the law of El after the inward man, my spiritual man, knows this right. But I see another law in my members, a law of selfishness. That's the flesh. The flesh is the beast. It only wants what it wants for its own. See that there? The flesh is the beast. The flesh of a man is the beast. That's why it's the number of a man. You see that? But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Now listen to this next part. I thank El through Yahushua HaMashiach, our husband. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of El, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So when I open my eyes to this 3D world with the outside world, I'm still judging what I'm doing, even though I know that that's carnal. I'm still doing it. I'm still saying, okay, I didn't steal that, so I'm right. I saw that woman, and yeah, I, I did lust after her, but I didn't actually get up and say anything. So I fought the fight, and I stayed there. I did right. But you didn't because you messed up when you thought the thought. You want to not think the thought. You want to be perfect like that. You see? So you got to be spiritually minded. But you still are going to have the tendency to, okay, don't steal. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do to the law of sin. See? He says, so with my mind, I serve the law of L. See, with your mind, you're going to serve the new commandment because there's a new commandment written on your mind, which is your heart. That's what we're going to get into next. All right. Now, let's go to John. Chapter 13. Verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you. Okay. Do you hear that there? Did it say a new commandments or does it say a new commandment? And does it say a new or an old? So you had old commandments, correct? We all know what they are. They were written in stone. Now I give you a new commandment. You see, so it has to be written somewhere. We're going to see where it's written. Then we're going to see what the new commandment is. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, not by anything else, but by this shall all men know that you are my branches, my disciples, if you have love one to another. End of the story there. So everybody that says that they follow after Yahusha, it should be apparent that they do because they love their neighbors as themselves. 
because that's the commandment that he gave and he didn't make it grievous or hard because he said it's not. It's not grievous or hard. That's easy. So all of that other stuff was grievous and hard. Now all I got to do is say, love my neighbor as myself. That cancels out all that other tedious, laborious, going back and forth and warring back and forth. That solves it. Do to him what I want somebody to do to me. That solved everything. Because I'm proving how I want to be treated by how I treat other people. Simple as that. So if I treat other people bad, then what am I saying I, how I want to be treated? So what, then what am I saying about how I feel about I am? See? You see? So that's the new commandment. Very plain, very easy to see. All right? Now we're going to go to the book of John, <laughs> chapter 8. Same book. Chapter 8. All right. John chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 3. Let's start at verse 2. Since the message I dropped yesterday, I said, it's not even, the sun's not even up yet. It's still dark. It's early morning. I talked about y'all eating cereal. So I'll read the previous verse and you'll see why I'm saying that. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law, the letter, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says you? Do you hear, understand now why this is even happening? Because there's a new commandment. There is a new testament. So then when there's a new testament that comes, there's going to be meet, met with resistance from the old. This is which, why you see these upholders of the old having aught with Yahusha, the bringer of the new. You see? Because the old don't want to leave. Esau doesn't want to leave in place of Jacob. But Esau is the end of that world, the world of blood and death and hunting. See? Pharisees were hunting for people breaking commandments so that they could kill them. That's Edomite way, way of being. That's why the Edomite image is what you think Jews are. You understand that? That's why he says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are actually the synagogue of Satan. Esau, the he goat, the shaggy he goat. Sir. Esau's homeland is called Mount Sir, which means hag, uh, hairy, shaggy. He goat, deceiver, devil. You see? Deceiving you. All right. So they said, the law say we're supposed to kill her. See, the law kills, but the spirit of the law makes alive. What would you want if you were caught? That solves it, brother, that you about to throw the stone. What would you want somebody to do if you had messed up and broke the commandments and were caught? Would you want grace or would you want to be stoned? So then why are you stoning? But let's get into it. This they said, tempting him. See? that they may have to accuse him, saying that he's breaking the commandments of Moses. But Yahushua stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And when they continued asking him, he lifted him up himself and said unto them, he that, was a, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. What convicts your own conscience? Your sin does. So they broke the commandments too. See, you without sin throw the stones. Well, they all had sin. So then why are you throwing stones? That what you want to happen to you? So then his commandment, do unto others as I would have, if you would have them do unto you. Doesn't it make sense that it supersedes stoning somebody for, break, for committing adultery? Doesn't it supersede it? Because it helps you who wants to stone and it 
It sets you free from your false judgment over righteous, and it sets the over wicked person who was caught in adultery free from their sin, which is what? I didn't do what I want done. I don't want somebody to be laying up with my woman, having sex with her. So then why would I lay up with somebody else's woman and have sex with her? See, the righteous commandment makes peace between both them men. Okay, they were convicted by their conscience. They went out one by one, beginning at the eldest until the last. And Yahushua was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Yahushua had lifted himself, he saw none but the woman. And he said unto her, Woman, where are those that accusers, thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? See, condemned thee? There is no condemnation if you got Christ. Like, he, like there, that woman got. She said, No man, Lord. And Yahushua said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. You see that? Grace was given because of the New Testament. So if the Old Testament were sufficient, then how come it didn't prevail against the new? That's my question for all the old law keepers. How come it didn't prevail against Yahusha that day, if it were true? Because it's a greater commandment. It's a better, the scripture says, covenant. It's better. You see? That's why it prevailed, because it's better. And he proved it that day that it was better, didn't he? All right. And we're going to jump back to the book of Exodus. Chapter 24, the book of Exodus, chapter 24. And we're going to start at verse 12. And it says, And the husband said unto Moshe, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that they mayest teach them. See? So the commandments that he gave, the old commandments that he gave them, what were they written on? He just told you. Stone. Who wrote them? Abba said he did. So why were they written on stone? To represent the stony, hard, bitter, rebellious, stiff-necked hearts of the people he's talking to. That's why. Because he, all, he never changes. So the new covenant, where is the commandments written? Let's see. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. Okay. Verse 31. Behold, the days come, says the husband, that I will make a new. Now, when did he make the new? When Yahushua said those words, I give you a new commandment. See? In those days, behold, the days come, says the husband, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Who was Yahushua sent to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's proving that he's the one that made the new covenant with the house of Israel in his blood. You see? With the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, says the husband. You see what I'm saying? The husband, you see. So the same ones I just read to you in Exodus, the tables of stone. They broke that covenant, Abba said. You see? 
even though I was a husband, they broke the covenant my, as my wife. They broke it. You see? So I'm going to make a new covenant because they broke the old one. I'm not going to give them the old one back. It wasn't sufficient. It was broken. So it's done away with. You see? You see? Watch. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the husband. I will put my law on a stone in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their L and they shall be my people. See that there? That's the new covenant. It's written in your heart. It's not written on no stone anymore because he's given you a heart of flesh. A beating warm heart now that's tender because you've been circumcised. You see? All right. Let's go to Hebrews. Yep. We all over the scriptures today. Old and new because that's what we're talking about. The old and the new. See? Because we've come to verify and fulfill the third testament here, which is the fulfillment of what Christ said. Just like Christ said, he came to fulfill. You see? So now, Hebrews. Let's go to chapter... Chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Okay? Let's start at verse... Let's start at verse. Start at verse one. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Okay, so all the things that the ministers and the prophets and everybody that have said, that have talked to you, this was the sum of it all. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of Majesty in the heavens. So where is Hosha? He's in the heavens at the right hand of the Father. He is our high priest. See? A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the husband pitched and not man. See? The true temple that he made. So no hands of man made this one. You see? Like the old one that Moses pitched in the wilderness. You see? For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serveth unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of El when he was about to make the tabernacle. For, for see, saith he, that you make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Just like I described to you. He's saying, just like Moses did, which is what I was describing to you just a second ago. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. By now much also he is the mediator of a what? A better covenant. Testament. A better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Did you hear that today, little flock? That's why Yahushua prevailed over those law keepers that day, Torah keepers, because he's better. You see? <laughs> For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If it had been fine the, the way it was, then it wouldn't have no need to have been a given another one. For finding fault with them, which we just read, they break my covenant. We just read it. He says, behold, the days come, which is from Jeremiah. Now he's quoting it. Behold, the days come that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made. See, same thing that we read earlier. It's the same thing. You see? Now, let's go to Galatians real quick. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1. O foolish Galatians, 
Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Yahushua HaMashiach have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only, what I learn of you, received you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. How did you get the Spirit to come to you? By keeping the law of God? Well, that couldn't be the case because Abba receives a broken, contrite heart so he can write the new commandment on it. It has to be broken and contrite so he can receive that. That's what he says. It says he will not refuse it. See? Well, how did your heart get broken and contrite from breaking the old law and it not being sufficient to save you? So it was fault. It had a fault. It was faulty. So he gave you a new one and he wrote it on your heart. You see that there? You see? So who have bewitched you? Tricking you to think that there's some works now that you can possibly do that will give you the spirit. That's what he's saying. Who's tricking you to make you believe that there's some works that you have to do of the law that will give you righteousness or the spirit? You have the spirit and you didn't do any of that. Like Abraham. See? Got it by faith. Let's see if he mentions Abraham. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? See? You started with the spirit without any works of the flesh and now you think you can do works of the flesh to make you get the spirit foolish like he said have you suffered so many things in vain if it be yet in vain he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith even as abraham told you even as Abraham believed El, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that El would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law, which means the works of the law are 3D works with your hands, are under the curse. You hear that, Israel? If you think you can please God by doing works with your hands, then you are under a curse because you can't. It is impossible to please him without faith, not works of the hands, but faith. You need faith to please the Father. And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. No longer in the deadness of the letter. Let's continue. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of El. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. So the law, the works of the law don't require faith. They require you to do with your hands. Seeing with your eyes. Faith, can you see it? No, evidence not seen. See? And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahushua HaMashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth, nor addeth thereto. So nobody can disannul the new commandment Christ gave. That's what I told you about those men putting those stones down. Why were they ready to stone the woman? Because remember the stony hearts that the law was written on? So that's why they had the stones in their hand ready to kill. But a warm, compassionate heart overwhelmed those stones and caused them to fall to the ground. Those stony hearts Ready to kill? You see? And this I say, excuse me, 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before the L in Christ, before L in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. <laughs> so the promise was already given before the law was given. So the law didn't disannul the promise. So when the law failed, it was faulty. Abba had to give a new covenant because the promise was already given. Woo! That's why he said, I will yet choose Israel again. I'm, I'm going to have mercy on them so that the promises will be fulfilled. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? He says, uh, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. See, but, but El gave it to Abraham by promise. See, wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions added. It was added. Do you hear that? That's the same thing with you in your house when you're a child. You're just living. You don't not told no and don't do that by your parents when you're just a baby and a suckling and a toddler. You're growing up, but eventually it's added to your life. What? No, don't do that. Don't steal. Don't covet. Don't don't want that for, of, that your brother has. Don't take what's his. Give it back to him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I mean? That. Drop my scripts there, y'all. That right there, that's being called added to your life because of transgression. You stepped outside and you didn't know it, but you stepped outside so that your parent added those words to your life. And how did it make you feel when they added it? Like you were dead. It hurt you. It brought death. You see what I'm trying to say? It didn't make you feel good. It wasn't a pleasant thing to be added to your life. You see there? It was heavy and burdensome. He says, it was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but El is one. Is the law then against the promises of El? El forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath in concluded all under sin, so all were to die. That the promise by faith of Yahushua Mashiach might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. And he told you who the schoolmaster was. For ye are the children of El by faith in Christ Hamashiach. For as many as you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You see that there? There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Hamashiach. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. hear that today so stay in the spirit of the law don't get caught up with these pharisees and sadducees and whoever the hell else sees that think they can see but they really blind pharaoh blinds sad you blind the hell ain't no sad you see you're sad you're blind thinking you can see <laughs> it ain't fair you blind pharisee it fair you blind it ain't fair you blind and sad you can't see <laughs> Y'all hear me today? Some fair or blind, they, it ain't fair they blind, and some sad you can't see is trying to talk to me. We're going to stay free. Silo Amisraela. <laughs>